Biblically Centered Kids. Hello and happy Wednesday to everyone out there. Welcome to another great day of the Biblically Centered Kids podcast. Today is September 4th, 2024. My name is Mr. Johnny and we're going to have some fun on today's episode. But first, do you remember what virtue we're learning about this week? That's right. We've been talking all about virtue J. This week's virtue says... We joyfully radiate hope because we've experienced God's grace. And we've got a holiday today. This one is an American holiday, but I think it's a holiday we can respect no matter where you live in the world. For those of you kids listening here in America, did you know we have listens in many countries all over the world? Anyone want to guess outside of America which country is our biggest listener? Any guesses? It's actually Belgium. Yeah, I was surprised to find this out too, but they're our second highest listener, so that's kind of cool. Anyways, back to our holiday. Today is National Wildlife Day. America marks National Wildlife Day on September 4th. This is an opportunity for everyone to step back, take a deep breath, and think about all that surrounds us. It's inspiring to consider preservation and conservation efforts that have worked to improve the natural world. There remains so much more for us to learn. As Henry David Thoreau once wrote, and wildness is the preservation of the world. And we couldn't agree more. So let's take a closer look at this special day and think about why it's so important. First, well, we need a breather. You might have heard someone tell you along the way to think outside the box. But how often do we acknowledge that the box is more than just something in our mind? It's physical too. Nature and wildlife remind us that it's time to get outside. It's good for your body, both physically and mentally, and I would even add spiritually. So get outside and experience nature. Number two, wildlife is life affirming. We admire wild creatures and the environments in which they live for a very simple reason. They remind us that it's each of us that is tasked with finding the right balance between ourselves and the world that we inhabit. And number three is it inspires us to do good. National Wildlife Day reminds us of the alarming numbers of endangered animals and habitats, and it encourages us to fight for preservation and conservation efforts. This is the world God has given us to care for. There are so many God-honoring things we can do to take care of the world. All right, let's say our virtue one more time for today. Are you ready? Say it with me. We joyfully radiate hope because we've experienced God's grace. We've been talking a lot about hope this week, right? So let's go ahead and take a closer look at hope and how we as people who follow Jesus can experience and understand hope every single day. And I want to thank Focus on the Family for some of the talking points on today's episode. You know, our culture often defines hope as merely a fanciful wish or maybe a casual desire. Things like, I hope tomorrow is a better day, or I hope we can go to Disney World next year. Or, like me, I hope the Astros win the World Series. Clearly, what is hoped for may or may not come to pass. The hope of believers in Jesus, however, is more than just a desire or a wish. It's an unshakable confidence in God, even when circumstances give us every reason to have doubt. It's easy to have hope and positivity when everything is going right in your life, right? But that's pretty easy for most people. I mean, saying you are full of hope when everything is great doesn't really mean a whole lot, even though, you know, it still is a good thing. But when you're in a situation that makes you sad or where you can't see anything positive in the situation, that's when having hope can really begin to make us strong. I know a lot of you listeners are young, but it's never too early to start learning the difference between our culture's view of hope and the hope that we have in Christ. 
Hope is not mere optimism or wishful thinking. It's an essential part of our faith. When we hope in the Lord, as mentioned 23 times in the Psalms, here's a few things it says we can expect. Are you ready? Hope in the Lord gives us strength. Our culture teaches us to have self-confidence, but us as believers are to place our confidence in the Lord. When we hope in Him, we find the confidence and strength to face any challenge that can come our way. Hope in the Lord can teach us patience. The world around us and society encourages us to solve our own problems. But when we face something that's impossible or a hopeless situation, we must learn to wait patiently on the Lord. We don't need to be anxious or worried. We can find peace in God's unfailing love for us. Hope in the Lord also brings us encouragement. You know that feeling you get at the end of a long week when you're so excited for the weekend and it kind of lifts your spirits? Now think about stretching that weekend out for eternity. We can find encouragement and joy all during life struggles because we know that we get to live forever with Jesus. This is why we are told to anticipate his glorious return in Titus 2.13. Because of Jesus, we have hope both in this life and for eternity. So here are some key points from this brief discussion. One, hope is an unshakable confidence in God despite our circumstances. Two, hope is essential to a believer's faith. And three, hope gives strength, teaches patience, and brings encouragement. All right, here's a memory verse for you this week, okay? We're going to call this the family memory verse for this week, or at least for this lesson. Romans 5.5 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given us. Let's say it again. Romans 5.5 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So maybe write that verse down and try to memorize it this week with your family. And you know what? That's going to be all for today. So thank you so much for listening. And we're going to see you right here tomorrow for our New Testament Thursday episode. Until next time.